How's it, friends? Just another jolly bearded brother to bring some holiday cheer and to give you a chance to win some free stuff for Christmas. And we're not talking a t-shirt or stuff we have sitting around the office. We're talking about official UH gear, stuff that still has tags on it, the good stuff. And how do you do that? It's real simple. All you gotta do, here on YouTube, drop a comment below and you all have that chance to win a prize pack of UH gear for the holiday season by just enjoying the podcast. You get a chance to listen to Isaac Sopolonga and Chad Owens talk about the 2003 bowl game. There's Chad right there. He wants you to have a chance to win a prize pack. All you gotta do, drop a comment, enjoy the podcast, and let's all have a merry little Christmas. All right, fellas, so we can't really have a conversation about this historic bowl game for 2003 without talking a little bit about the season because both you guys had good years that year. You were coming off a great year in 2002. Isaac, you were a second-team all-conference. Chad, you were all-conference that year in 2003. Let's talk about that season. Chad, I want to start with you first. Like, What do you remember about that year the most besides the bowl game? Um, man, well, look, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be a hundred percent honest with you. Uh, not a whole lot, <laughs> not a, not a whole lot of specifics. Um, you know, I, I just, for me personally, I just remember, you know, coming off of, uh, the 2001, 2002, really just, you know, finding, cause I believe in 2002, did we not, so we 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 missed we didn't we weren't in a bowl game in two right or were no, you we were you were in the yeah, very first Hawaii bowl against Tulsa. oh in two yeah yeah oh that's right it was three we went three years in a row no yep two lane two three four well for me it was three I see you were two yeah right yeah two yeah so um man like for me I'm just gonna be honest I don't want to speak for myself Isaac can probably speak for himself but like I feel like my entire college career. Was is like I look at it as like one, one long like season, if that makes sense to you. Um, you know, I, I've it, I, it's like so far removed. I only remember specifics. That's why I texted you and said, "Man, I only Eric, I, I remember these these things about that game and you know about that season." Um, I can't really recall like exact moments to be quite honest. Uh, you know, I sort of, you know move on man like year to year so i don't know uh specifically uh much details about that that season so maybe you could jump in and, and, and refresh my memory but uh, you know we'll we'll get to that in a quick second but i want to go now to isaac and kind of get your thoughts isaac to kind of how you viewed that year and kind of the year that the, the team was having and you were having well to me it was a uh... Winning games of uh, in uh, 02 because 01, we were uh, watching film, especially for San Jose State, right, uh, Chat? Because we, yep. we lost uh, to uh, San Jose State in uh, 01, right? Yeah. And then when they came down here and we played them, that's when, I mean, winning games that year before the year that, that, you know, I was like actually playing, you know, it's more memories to me. What yeah. I mean, I think, I, I think yeah, we're, we're on the same page there about, you know, it's, you know, I think, I think that's the, the, you know, and I'm going to kind of jump all over the place here, you know, with football, you know, as, as we, Isaac and I became pros, right? Like you, and he, this is what coach Jones, taught me and taught us to have that one snap and clear mentality. So, you know, I guess that's why it's hard to recall so many like things like the, the things that stand out about the college career. That's why I said the college career sort of as a whole, like I remember moments for myself. Like I, I do remember moments at us for myself as a team, uh, BYU, uh, the Alabama games, um, you know, coming back against, you know, for me, my senior year, the, the Northwestern Michigan State games, uh, going on the road, playing Fresno, like 
there's there's spots and things that we remember yeah. uh but you know at the end of the day it's like you just you, you got to move on to the next game move on to the next game and i guess that's why it's it's hard for both isaac and i, I to, to really recall the season so maybe eric maybe you jump in and sort of refresh our memory with some things and and maybe we can kind of uh you know maybe try to give you a little bit more insight then no problem. I can do that fairly easy for you both because yeah. 2003 was one of those years where it kind of it left a, a lasting impression on a lot of people because that was the season you guys going in the bowl game went eight and five. So you like you look at that season. You open the season with a a pretty solid win against a, what was an FCS team that year, Appalachian State, and then you were on the road and dropped the the next two at USC and at UNLV. Are we starting to jog a little bit of memory here for you guys? And yep. kind of how the start of yep. the season went for you? Yep. So yep, exactly. Remember that. Let's talk about that USC, because that was when USC was really starting to pick up. And Reggie Bush, man. Yep. Exactly. See, exactly. And I believe that was around the same time. Um, I want to say Carson Palmer may have been at USC. Maybe he left the year before that. Yeah. It's, it's 17 yeah, years old. So. <laughs> Carson, was it Carson uh, or was it, it Matt, was, uh, Matt Leinart? No, no, no. It was uh, Matt Castle. There you go. It was Matt Castle at USC yeah. and, and, and that Matt season Castle. that you guys played on. So, like, you look at the start of the season. You guys go one and two to kind of get the ball rolling. Um, you're coming off a 10-win season the year before, 2002. So, how does Coach June write the ship for you guys to really start picking up things to get on the roll? Because – after that, you guys win the next two out of your three. You take care of Rice. You do drop one on the road at Tulsa. And then you beat Fresno State. So, like, what was – can you guys recall kind of, like, how the locker room was, how the season was going at that point, what Coach June was telling you guys, or what do you remember? Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, I, I, mean I, I just think Coach Jones' philosophy is what it is. You know, his first year at, at the University of Hawaii in the 99 season, 2000, to, throughout his whole tenure as a, as a Hawaii, you know, as our coach, as, mm -hmm. as a University of Hawaii coach, SMU, his philosophy, and that's the thing about coaches, their philosophy is their philosophy. The way they fire guys up, the way they, you know, approach the game, it's all the same. It's, that's not going to change. So, Coach Jones, his, his way of us helping us get through things so is always about, one snapping clear. It was always about um, one week at a time. Hey, that's behind us. Like it, his, I've never seen a coach, and Isaac, and you can maybe jump in yeah. afterwards, but throughout, even throughout my professional career, that 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 had the um, what's the word? The the poise. I guess that Coach Jones presented. He don't worry. No worries. Yeah, he don't worry. He just. Don't do it again. Let's win this next one. Yeah. But at the same time, around, you know, during our time, it was by choice. Our own individual choice. Like, yeah. I I don't want to get beat, right? So, so that was by our own individual choice that let's win, let's win, let's win. That... That really yeah. help us a lot. And let's, let's win our individual battles, right? Like let's yeah. all just do our job. And I think, yeah. you know, and, and, and I'm going to be honest, right? Like, it sounds like an easy thing to have, but not everybody has that. I think mm -hmm. everybody has a choice to show up every day and, 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 and work to be the very best that they can possibly be and, like, just not accept defeat. But that's why there's only a few guys that go on to the next level because they have that ability to, to make it happen up here, right? So uh, not saying that the guys that don't have it and, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of other factors that come to, to, to play, but when it comes down to it, yeah, like each individual guy had to make that choice, like Isaac said. Uh, but then you, even if you make those choices, man, you still need a coach, a leader that, that, that brings the best out of you, that, that has that calmness about themselves like coach Jones has that has that no worry mentality. So if he's not worrying, shoot, we we're not worrying. Like 
I've been on teams where the coach is losing his mind, and and that oh. just trickles down. It doesn't help. I just, I'm sure you've been the same in a locker room that had that type of coaching. Yeah, yeah. My first, uh, my first uh, five years with the with the uh, San Fran, it was not good. I mean, yeah. my first uh, first season, we went two and fourteen. Second year, we went four and twelve. You know, it's like every every year, just win two games. But you know, it was not good. You know, we rather win more games so that so that we can get to the uh, you know play off or or something. Yeah, yeah, and that's what it takes, man. So that that was coach. It, it, it was Coach Jones, man. That's just who he was, Eric. I think um, you always he 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 just found a way to get you to quickly forget about it and move on to the next practice, the next play. Yeah, and that's that's just how that's just how he rolled, and that's how we rolled. Mm -hmm. By the sound of it, the way that you both kind of describe it, he was quintessentially a player's coach. Oh, very much so. The 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 players coach, the, the perfect players, players coach. coach. The players coach, aka father, right? <laughs> yep. 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 Great exactly. Leader. He he was a coach that you could go into his office and talk about anything. You can't yep. do that with a lot of head coaches. Mm -hmm. A lot, a lot, of, a lot, of, a lot of coaches are just they're they're there because it's like, hey, I'm here to be a coach. I'm here to win ball games. That's it, strictly business. And I and and I'm not against that. That that that's, you know, that works in some places. That works for some organizations. That that works for certain players. But I think Coach Jones just had a way to relate to players because he was a player himself. Mm -hmm. um, he wasn't given anything. He he worked for everything he had, and I think it, it was just his way of giving back. You know, by being that way because of the way he had to go and and earn it. So, yeah, he's. I say it all the time. He's one of my favorite, if not my favorite, coach of all time. Yeah, I feel you. So when you have someone like Coach June that's leading the way for that 2003 year, what about? Player-wise, was there anybody that stuck out to you guys that was like a locker room leader, an on-the-field leader? You always hear about Samson, that he was one of those guys. I heard, even though, Isaac, you were kind of the quiet guy led by example, there were a lot of guys that looked at you. Like, what was it about that team in terms of, like, player personnel that were some leaders that kind of set the tone? Uh, I mean – Going back to o, o 02, right? Chris Brown, Pisa, you know, they were great leaders. You know, I'm just I'm just a regular guy just to line up on the line and just ball snap, boom. I just do my job. But having those guys as uh as vocal, leaders, the vocal, the vocal yeah, leaders, yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm just a humble guy. I just do whatever coach want, and also with the support from you know uh, uh, those guys, leaders. That 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 that, that kind of make it more easier, because you know it'll be more difficult to coach Jones already choose leaders, but for us, you know, for some guys, try to put in their own two lines, but which is you know respect your leaders, even though you know coaches are our leaders, but you know. We have guys on the field to be our leader. That I think that's what uh, make it more easier. Just yeah, to... and, and and I think everybody knew their role, right, Isaac? I think uh, yeah. Isaac 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 led, like you said, led by example, right? He 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 was still a presence that everybody wanted to be, right? You see this guy six six three, two hundred ninety pounds doing three sixty dunks in a gym. That's just like okay, that doesn't happen every day. And, you know, you just see that and he, he, you know, it's nonchalant about it. So he carried that quiet storm, that quiet, like that humble explosion, you know, it, it, it just, it, it was, you know, it was a leader in a different way. So he was a leader to those guys who were also like that, right? Pisa, Chris, the guys that want to be vocal, he was leaders to guys that, that, that wanted that, 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 that rah-rah, you know what I mean? And, and it's, uh, we had a good collective group. We had yeah. a well-rounded group of different types of leaders. Yep. Um, 
that that that, that made that locker room special, you know. Um, and then yeah, but it, it's it's top bottom, right? Coach Jones led that, and it just trickled down to the assistant coaches how he wanted to operate, and then to the leaders of the in the locker room, and so on and so forth. So. Uh, yeah, leadership is huge, and, and and whether you want to call it a captain, if you were chosen to be a captain or not, you still we still had leaders, veterans. Uh, I say veterans, but more of like the seniors and the the upperclassmen yeah. that the underclassmen respected. You know, I was an underclassman, and I respected all those guys, right? Mm-hmm. So I think it comes down to uh, them giving respect. And when you when you're a leader and you give respect, I think you right away gain the respect of your of your of your peers. So. We had a solid group in that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So a name that always comes up during that era of UH football is is Timmy and what he was able to do on the field, the numbers he put up. Was he one of those guys, Chad? Was he one of the ones that, that led by example? Was he a rah-rah guy? Kind of talk about you as receiver and him as QB1. What was he like that season from what you can recall? I mean, you know, you got to – I just think about Timmy's whole process, right, from high school, St. Louis, he's all-stater, right, greatest passer in the world at the time. And coming into a situation in Hawaii where, you know, there was a lot of expectation. And regardless of the ups and downs of his career, you know, coming in, Rolo starting, he – chimed in he played okay Jason Wilden took over never really you know and then his last couple seasons really like exploded but Timmy was a guy that to me never never really got flustered he he was a more of a mental prep guy he was he was always mentally ready for every single game Mm -hmm. every single game like his football IQ was ridiculous that's why he's in the position he is today right As, as a coach um, but he wasn't, he wasn't a rah, rah guy, but I know he silently played with a chip on his shoulder and, and because I felt like maybe, and I am sure he wasn't given the respect he deserved in my opinion. Uh, and I think, you know, his senior year, our senior year, um, just playing with him, he really sort of just kind of took off and, and, and did his thing. Uh, but yeah, Timmy was a great leader in that, you know, it showed that, Hey, as a quarterback, it's the most looked at position on the football mm-hmm. field. Not it's easy. the most critiqued, right? Isaac is the most critiqued yeah. position on the field. So, you know, the, the, the blame game could go right to that guy every single time. And he, he just brushed it off. He got pulled out of the game. No worries. Showed up the next day at practice spinning that thing like he just never got flustered he was the he was the perfect example of a june jones quarterback yeah, exactly like, i was say the same thing that that's that's it like that was that was june jones like you know poise it just you know so i think it was a perfect marriage i think uh coach jones was the perfect coach for timmy coach dan robinson as well as the qb coach was amazing mm-hmm. and uh that 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 marriage you know was was perfect and i think timmy learned a lot and shoot man yeah he was the greatest passer one of the greatest passer of, passers of all time yeah now on the flip side of that and isaac you and i were talking about this before we started recording abe was one of those guys that was on the defense with you and he's a coach now and he is one of the guys that's been a catalyst of coaches at uh over the last few years Talk about him and some other guys that were difference makers on the defensive side. We've talked about Timmy, what he done. Well, what about the defensive side? Like, what was special about that year and that defense you were part of? Well, you know, it was so more priorities, you know, because of course we all want to win most of our games, right? But you know, not 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 uh, not try to have the uh, other team gain yards, score a touchdown, but you know, working together, working together, doing practice, you know, on the field during game, that really helped us a lot. You know, it's uh, it was not just because this this uh, teammate is a captain. No, we were all captain. 
we were all brothers. We were all family. So every all eleven guys in one play work together. Make it make it a lot easier. You know, we we have guys in a box that we can't stop the run. We got linebackers. We got safety. We got corners that can protect the wall from the and so. I mean, everybody work work together, make it uh, you know a lot a lot easier for us. On our, I mean, on- if I can just, if I can just chime in and add on to that, Isaac, uh, from what I what I've seen, right, from Abe especially, Abe was a great player. Yeah, Abe was a guy who he talked a little bit. He 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 liked to chirp, right? He liked to chirp, but that was part of his game. But he was also what he was also very vocal. And the entire defense, you know, as a unit, was vocal because the D line had to communicate with the linebackers had to communicate with the you know. The corn, the, the nickel backs, corners. Uh, the, there was so much communication going on, and like Isaac said, it's not about oh, you just the captain's gonna be the only one talking. No, like there's no secrets on the defensive everybody. side of the ball. There's no secrets. Everybody has to communicate so everyone's on the same page. Like defense is those is the side of the ball that if someone's off, it's a touchdown. Yeah. Right. So so that's what I noticed from our defense every day of practice. I mean, Abe was a competitor. Me and Abe went at it, you know, um, but he was very vocal, mm-hmm. and you know, it was it, we had a the, the communication level on our defense. That's just what I remember witnessing every day at practice uh, in the games. That's that's what I remember. Yeah, true that. Now it's interesting that we have this conversation about both sides of the football, and Chad, you chiming in about the defense. Eyes, you talk, talking about the offense a tad bit. What's what's really special about that 2003 season, you guys only lost one home game. And that was against Boise State in their in their regular season finale. Mm-hmm. What was it about playing in Aloha? And what was it about your all's team that whenever someone came here, like they knew they were in for a test? What made this team special when they played at home? Shoot. You know the rules. <laughs> <laughs> You cannot let anybody come into your house and own your house, right? So that's it. That's that's like you know. To me, I don't know about you know uh, my brothers around that time. You know, I mean, why? Why would you have somebody outside of your family come in and disrespect your home? So yeah, they're coming up in here with their shoes on, man. Take yeah. them shoes off, boy. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we got to protect this house, right? Yeah, it's just, you know, yeah, it's just so, you know, simple. Yeah, and I think, you know, the, the Aloha Stadium specifically, you know, our fans, I think our culture, right, the, the Polynesian culture as a whole just has so much more, they, they carry so much more pride. It's like, it's like the war, the rain, the Warriors, Rainbow Warriors. Now, that team was their was their babies. That team was their, you know, their identity. Every single one of those people in the stands felt as if they they were on that field with us. And yeah, like you're not gonna come into our house and disrespect. And and you know, it's it's it's. I think the atmosphere that got created um, was amazing. And that's you know that's what's so sad about you know this past season. I hate to jump and fast forward, but you know. That's that's definitely uh, a necessity when you, when you're at home to to have your fans in the house uh, to have them have to carry that sense of pride with them on the off days, not just on game days, yeah. right? And I think that was a difference in, in, in our time, you know, during our the time we played, and then even as thereafter in the Colt Brennan era, I think people really took pride. In, in, in University of Hawaii football, they, they all felt part of the, part of the team, a part of the program, and that's you know that's what made it difficult. You come here, it's like man, people walking into the stadium, it's scary, you know, because they, they 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 know that, man, um, I'm not trying to see this brother outside, you know what <laughs> I mean? I'm not trying to see these guys. Like you know, we had we had the the, the best mascot in the game in the Billy. I mean, seeing that dude on the sidelines, come on, man. Isaac, you know what I'm saying? Both men on, on the field. sidelines. Both men on the field right there. Come on, man. Hey, we didn't shoot. Ooh. Billy, 
He, oh, really? Yeah, it really was a huge advantage for us. Yeah. So, yeah. all right, going off of that, because, and we're going to hit on this a little bit, uh, when we get a little bit deeper into it, we get to the post-game part of the bowl game. You guys had kind of developed a reputation about playing at home. And I referenced back to the year before, 2002, Cincinnati coming to UH and kind of how that portrayed and how that turned to a, a, a fight. Crutches that, line. Exactly. Like, did you guys take pride in having that type of reputation, that mentality? Did that really step up for you guys and really make a difference for when teams came in to play at Aloha? Man, it's, it, we're warriors, man. It, war, when warriors go out to battle, it, it, it's a fight. It legitimately is a fight. And if you don't, if you're not taking it to that level, yeah, we're not trying to go out there and fight every single game. We don't want to be known as the, the, hey, the warriors, they're the fighters. But look, man, I don't care if you're a Big Ten school, Pac-10, whatever, whatever com bigger Good conference he was in other than the, Mont, you know, the WAC conference, you're not going to come up in here and thinking you're going to bully us. So mm -hmm. I think we sort of had that that chip on our shoulder that look, man, no, we're 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 warriors. It don't yeah. it don't matter who you are when you come when you come here, you're gonna feel this. You know, you especially defensively, Isaac. I, when they when when we tackled, we tackled guys. We 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 tackled with intent, and I think it was known. Like they they knew after the first quarter. I already know they're on the other side. Like, man, they're, they're sitting on the bench. Like, bro, like you seen you seen that dude, bro. Like, I'm not trying to come across the middle and catch that ball. You know what I mean? I know that those are the conversations that they're having with themselves on the sideline. So I think we created an identity for ourselves as as just that, man. Fighting warriors. That you're yeah. not just gonna come up here and 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 do that. Yeah, and then as especially when you know when you hear rumors about you know other higher conference you know talk so low about the whack that really motivates us you know hey conference is conference human is human but it's how bad your individual how bad you want it you know yep it's like you know uh uh Chad say you know cincinnati they're what fair cats we're warriors it's funny you bring that up, Isaac. You talk about the other teams that, that would come and from other conferences. One of the teams you all played that year was Alabama. And everybody knows SEC, SEC. Especially, all. yeah. <laughs> so, like, so, like, do you guys remember, like, bits and pieces of, of that, that game? Now, granted, Alabama 2003 was, is, was in a different era of football back then. But at the same time, that's an SEC school. That's, that's a conference that is – that everybody goes, well, there's the conference. We got a measuring stick. But at the same time, when they came in here, they got beat. They left wounded. So, like, when they when they came in, was that was extra motivation for you guys? <laughs> what do you say, Chad? Yeah, hey, look. I mean, it, it's just going off of what Isaac said. You know, it's like you already know what they're thinking. I'm going to this. We're going, it's, it's the whack, man. It's Hawaii. We're gonna go there on vacation, man. We just we're running yeah. over these guys. Like I know, like that's the mentality of of the big schools. I don't care what the coaches tell you. Coach is gonna tell you, hey, look, man, look. Coach is gonna try to keep you focused and make it seem like you're not playing this whack school. They're gonna say, hey, you gotta respect your opponents. You gotta come with it. You gotta da da da. Man, that's going in there, out there. It's like, man, it's Hawaii, man. We're going there on vacation. We're going to slap these guys. You can't help but think that. I know that's what they're thinking, and we know that, right? And you know, our our our, I, the, we won both those Alabama games with our defense, the way they were hitting them boys, causing turnovers. Offense showed up too. We did our thing, but it was the defense that really won those games for us, and um. They, they, all those, all those players on, on those Alabama teams after that game, I know they, they had a new, uh, found respect yep. for the Warriors. And they still remember that because they were so big ahead coming down in 02, expecting that they're going to tsunami us, put up 40, 50 points. But no, 
they barely won. They only won by four. And then when they came down 03, there was something on a paper that say 02 was 02. They gonna play for real. But what happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. See, That's those, right. Those That's teams, right. Those teams motivate us, especially come from a big conference. You cannot come in here and then disrespect my house. No, no. All right, so let's look at that bowl game. Now, the unfortunate part of this conversation is, Chad, you didn't get a chance to play in that game. You were injured. No. Yep. So, leading up to I guess the, that's why. I guess that's why I put it out of my memory. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you remember kind of what, what happened, what, what took you out of that situation 17 years ago? Do you remember kind of how everything kind of went, how you felt about that, about not being able to play in a bowl game? It was tough. You know, it's, it's always – I mean – you know, I couldn't, I couldn't be out there and compete. You know, at the end of the day, we're all competitors. We all, we want to win the game, exact. You know, but, but for me, selfishly, I want to compete, and I was just mad that I couldn't compete with and, and help the team, right? But, um, you know, it was what it was, and guys, guys step in, and and that's just that's the way it goes. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I just remember that game being not surprised but i was impressed by you know one of their receivers this dude was like a track star and i just remember this guy just running all around us just a lot of speed and i I can't remember seeing that type of speed um from an individual player so that was the first time i really saw someone like that just was like four two just track guy and so i remember that um I don't know, Isaac. Do you remember that that dude, the, the yeah, fast, Johnson. fast receiver? I think, I think his name was Johnson. Last name Johnson. Yeah, I think he know. might be right. I think he might be right. I think it was yeah. number seventeen, something like that, man. I, it's it's like it was a blur. <laughs> <laughs> I think the guy that you were both referring to is Marshall, who Marshall. who scored Marshall. the uh, the touchdown at the end of fourth quarter. Marshall. And so I want to get into the game, but there's a, there's a thing about this that I did not remember until I started doing a little bit of research over the last couple of days. We, got, we knew we were going to have you both on. And I want to see if you remember this. Do you remember before the bowl game that there was a bomb threat in Aloha Stadium? Do I remember that? I may vaguely remember that. Um, it sounds – it sounds like it happened. Like I, I can, I can, you know what I mean? I think I vaguely remember that. Now, just to try and jog some memory a little bit and like, there's really nothing to it. It was, it was all just a thread and whatnot. But what was, what was scary about that is if you get a chance to go back and watch the game before the game starts and it was on ESPN's Christmas day is they actually show two things. They show extra security was hired at Aloha that day, and up in the lights, they had snipers that were sitting atop mm-hmm. the stadium. So, I so like I, I, I know if you, if you both don't remember, maybe this question is invalid. But at the same time, I do want to ask the question: If you know that that's happening, how is it? Like, how do you get yourself ready to play for that? If you know about it, like, I gotta imagine. I mean, you both don't seem to remember a whole lot about it. But at the same time, that's gotta be a little scary, wouldn't you think? Wow. Yeah. But to me, since you mentioned that they were a sniper, I'll be fine. I'll be okay, right? Good point. <laughs> I'm protected, you know, by my fans, family, and then also with snipers. With so, the pros. With I, the pros, yeah. man. We we good. We yeah. in good hands. <laughs> so I, uh, I, no, you know what? Like I, I now that you're saying this stuff, like I I may have been, you know, at the time, maybe it was like, man, is that for real? Is it a joke? Is it, I, you know, yeah. so I guess it was for real. But you know what? It's, we were there and, hey, two teams was in a building, right? You, you, you playing a football game. So you need to try your best to, to, to block out the noise, to block out everything else and just execute, you know, each play. So, um yeah, I mean that's that's kind of the way I see it, and yeah, I mean it's you said it, man. Seventeen years ago, that's 
that's a long time ago um, to, to try to draw some specific memories. But, I mean, the biggest memory that stands out the most is, is the fight, you know, at the end. And I know you said that we could talk about that later, but that's 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 what I remember about that one. Well, we'll get to it in a second, I promise, because we're yeah. going to spend a little bit yeah. of time on that. Is And I want to go to actually in the game, because there were two things that were happening in that game. Is It really was a slugfest. No team had a lead that was lar- that was larger than ten. Um, it went back and forth quite a bit. And uh, Chad, I know you weren't in the game, but at the same time from the sidelines, I'm sure that you were kind of seeing the same thing. But Isaac, I want to go to you to kind of talk about when you're in the moment. You're going against an offense like Houston that was giving you guys some problems. That had Kevin Cobb who put up some crazy numbers when he was at Houston. What do you recall from that day? And, like, what was going on? Was there a lot of chirping between teams? Was there, was there like, a lot of back and forth between the offense and the defense whenever you guys were out there? What do you remember? Uh, you're right. You know, there was back and forth. But, you know, at the end, we won the game, right? But it was – it was just so just so hard to uh, to uh, figure out. Even though we know that they love to run the ball around uh, that year, but also mixing their running game, their uh, passing game, you know. But but we but we you know. Handled it well, you know. We stopped the run, you know, and then we have our linebackers, our corner safety, you know, protect, you know, their passing game. But you know, but the but the uh, main thing that you know, we won. Now, Chad, I want to go to you, and I want to get your thoughts on this. So you look at that day. Timmy had 475 passing yards and five touchdowns. Timmy doing Timmy, and he didn't even start. And then you look at – Oh, that's right. Okay, so that's the game he came Jimmy off the bench. Up. Yeah. Yeah, he came off the bench that who, game. Who, who started that game? Was it was it uh, Jason? Wilden? Yeah. Uh, okay. Wilden, right? Yes. It was Wilden. Yeah. So – That's right. He came off the game and went off. All right. Came off the bench, so excuse me. You, you talked about earlier with Timmy where he kind of played the chip on his shoulder. I am, I am, maybe I'm far stretching here on this one. Was that a move by Coach June to try and get Timmy to, to elevate his game that day? Or was that, or, or is that where he did have such a big game? Like, what would you read out of that for, as you describe, a guy that had kind of a chip on his shoulder sometimes and something to prove? You know what? I think as a coach, you know, you always are, your number one job is to put the team in the best position to win. And I, I think at the time, Jason had come in because Timmy was starting. He was, you know, having an off game. Jason come in, play well. And and so I just think down the stretch, if I'm not mistaken, I think Jason was kind of doing his thing. And I'm not so sure if it was a, a a mobility thing that Jason had more mobility. And and I, and I think that their, their defense, their front must, I think they might have been pretty athletic. And I think and again, don't quote me on this, but I think that's kind of what what happened and, and why Jason was starting. Hey, Jason could ball too. He was a player. But I just think when when Timmy got the opportunity to come in and really almost like, yeah, it was a statement and letting everyone know, Coach Jones included, the stadium, the fans, everybody said, look, man, this is this is what I do. This is this is this is my team, and uh, I, I just think it was a it was a proving uh, game for Timmy to go out and just mm-hmm. just do his thing. And I think it was also a confidence booster uh, for him in knowing that truly what he's what he's capable of. And he did that coming off the bench, you know. So it, it, it's I don't know. I, I don't know what the deal is with that quarterback's coming off the bench and playing well. Maybe there's less pressure. Maybe it's like, you know, 
again, and I don't know. Who knows what coaches think sometimes when they do some of these moves with the quarterbacks, but um, it worked out in, in, in Timmy's favor. It was, fun, it was fun to watch, you know, because playing, you don't really get to watch, right? When you, when you, especially on the sideline, especially after playing, and then you get injured and you're on the sideline, you know, you put yourself in the game mentally, but being able to just witness greatness is, is also something special. And I, and I remember that was, that was extremely special to watch Timmy play as well as he did. Now, on top of Timmy having a good game, and this is the one that, that it really kind of set the president for what was coming for, for the next few years, is that was a game Jason Rivers went out there and had a big game. Ooh. Two huge touchdowns. He, he was a freshman, correct? He was a freshman. A freshman. Yeah. So, like, in, as we know now, I mean, you look at the, the list of receivers that have made their mark on UH. Chad, your name is always brought up. Jason's name is always brought up. Like, what was your thoughts looking back and seeing a freshman elevate to that level and playing on such that big of a stage? You know, I wasn't I wasn't surprised because if you and I'm sorry, Eric, do you keep seeing my note of my things dropping down? Is that is, are you seeing that on your end? No, you're good, Chad. I promise. Oh, okay, sorry, sorry, these notifications. Um, look, you know, Jason Rivers, probably the most talented and athletically gifted receiver, I think, to have ever come through Hawaii. Because you want to look, you want to talk about the combination of height. Size, speed, route running, grit. Like, he had it all. And he had it all as a freshman. Like, that, that's what was most impressive. And that's why he played as a true freshman. And, um, I, yeah, I mean, that was his coming out party. I, if I'm not mistaken, he had a big, was it like a post that he caught? Like a big post or like a over the middle? Like, just like, I just remember him having a couple of really big plays and, um, it was special to see, you know, and and he went on to 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 do that for the next three years, you know, alongside with Colt and everything. So he was a huge factor on the offensive side, anyway. And I I played, if I'm not mistaken, I played next to him. He was the X, I was a slot next to him, and that 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 helped me out, you know, because he's he's blowing the top off, and I'm able to work some of the underneath stuff. So, um. Yeah, man, he was definitely a, a tremendous talent. Yeah. And also come from great leaders. How so? How do you mean? <laughs> how do you mean how do you mean that, Isaac? I mean, you know, like uh Chad, Gomini, uh who else who else? We had, we had Gerald, Gerald Welch. Gerald. I mean, those are best brothers, you know, great leaders that you know this those uh, guys around that time, they are freshmen. They like learn from these guys. You know, it's like a, it's like a uh, a gun mech, you know, one bullet after another one. You know, yep. once, yep. once, you know, go down, the next one come up. One uh, one bullet fired, the next bullet, you know, gotta, gotta be, gotta be ready. And that was yeah. definitely a big one for Jason as, you know, one of those bullets. I mean, the guy had 143 yards and three touchdowns that game. So, I mean, of Timmy's five touchdowns, Jason was on the receiving end of three of those. So, yeah. like, it was a big day for both those guys. Now, unfortunately, there was a moment in the latter moments of the game, and I want to get your guys' thoughts on it, and then we'll get to the, the big news about this game afterwards, is there was a missed field goal at the end that could have put you guys up by 10 and sealed the deal with about a minute left. And then there was the big 81-yard uh, touchdown that tied it. Isaac, I want to start with you. When you were on the sidelines and you're seeing that happen, you actually may have been out there on special teams. I don't know. I can't remember. But when you guys are playing in that moment and you see those two things happen, like what's going through your head when you're going through such a battle like you all did that day? To us? Yeah. Did we score? Or no. so you guys were up by seven, and uh -huh. there's a missed field goal with under a minute left that would have made it 10. But after the missed field goal, on three plays later, uh, Cobb found Marshall for an 81 yard touchdown to tie uh -huh. the game. So, and then, and then you know, for us, you know, 
defense, you know, we're hunters, right? I, uh, we always tell um, the boys, especially the O-line, hey, get ready. Get ready because, you know, we're going to go out there, stop them, and then the ball come back to us so that, you know, they can, you know, so that we can score. So after all that happens, you guys go into overtime. What was it like playing a game like that went that deep? Three overtimes. Three overtimes. Deep. I remember it. Three overtimes, man. It feels so fresh to me. It feels like that was the beginning of the game. I didn't I didn't feel tired at all. I didn't feel not like I feel like the game just started. So you guys weren't tired. You were motivated, sounds like. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was like a, I definitely, I can feel that, like, now that you're saying that, I definitely feel like there was, like, a like an energy boost because, you know, you talked about that scenario. You go from basically a chance to seal the game to where it turned out for them scoring and tying it, forcing overtime now. And, okay, like Isaac said, this is, okay, this is the new game. This is, this is where it begins. And, I did, like, yeah, I felt the, the energy rise. And I felt the the heat rise. You know, every play meant that much more. Every play was the winning play. You know, so so in those in that situation, you can't you ain't got time to even think about being tired. There's an extra energy that that surges. You know. So you go in that third overtime, and you get the you get the score at the beginning of the third overtime. Isaac defense holds, keeps Houston in check game over what what was like were you tired then when you when it's after three overtimes you guys have won it's all set in like how did you feel after the game actually it was just it was just maybe maybe a minute i was tired because you know game game was over but when that thing happened it feels like i'm already juiced up <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So basically we're going on the on the fourth overtime. <laughs> but but my whole body just like calm when you know when we stopped Houston on that uh third overtime. How long did it take? And this is the part that everybody wants to talk about, the part everybody wants to hear. And I know it's probably been discussed many times over these last 17 years, but I, I really want to get your guys' thoughts. Is how long did it take from the end of the game to the fight to start? It it I, I don't think it was very long. I, I really don't think it was very long. I just think because it was such a it was such a um, a back and forth battle, such a heated battle. It it wasn't it. From what I recall, Isaac, I don't know. I didn't. I didn't think it was very long after the game. You know, because it's like game's over. Okay, we want to celebrate, and guys are coming together, doing like the handshakes, and all of a sudden, it's like something happened. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. It, it happened right after. Maybe like I say, 20, 30, 30 seconds. Yeah, a minute max because the game's yeah. over. We run in the field. It's like they know they lost. They're walking across the way, you know, whatever. Coaches are trying to find each other, shake hands. That happens within that first minute, right? And, yeah, and it was on. What know? led to it? Was it just something that was just building and building and building? Was it one incident? What 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 led to it? Honestly, I don't know, like, the actual what started the fight. I, I don't know. I just think that it was such a heated battle, a back and forth battle. Maybe some there was definitely chirping going on during the game, and you know some guys just take it to another level. You know what I mean? It's okay to chirp, it's okay to to compete, and that sometimes that that's what you do to get juices flowing. But when that final whistle blows, man, you hey, you gotta you gotta accept the the results. You lost, you lost. It was it was it was a it was a, a hard fought game, but. Uh, I just think that there were some guys that maybe took it to another level and one thing leads to another. And again, going back to, you know, you're not going to come in our house and, and, you know, disrupt or do anything, let alone 
thinking you're going to be able to start a fight or, you know, try to fight somebody without the whole family getting involved. So, you know, that's, that's just, that, it, it, and, and end up, that's what, that's what it is. Right. Yeah. Isaac, where were you during all that? Were you in the middle of it? Were you in the back end? Where were you? Well, actually I was at, I was at the, um, back end looking, looking for my family. Right. So I was waving and then it just happened so fast. And then I heard people say, Oh, fight, fight, fight. I just turned around and then just went in. I mean, what can we do? You know, <laughs> because when you, when you look back at that situation, I, I say this in the sense of the fight in the game itself, three overtimes, really put the Hawaii Bowl on the map. Like, it was the second year of the Hawaii Bowl, and the storyline, the drama, the anticipation, all that put that game on the map. But when you look at that incident, there were helmets flying. There were – I mean, it was one punch after another. I mean, no one was holding back. Yeah, so, it, it, was, it was bad. Could you imagine that happening, like, in this era, like, with social media? And see, it's that's crazy. The thing, that's the thing, Chad. Like, that doesn't happen – like it did back then, 17 years ago. We've had some stuff happen. We mean the NFL last year with the Browns and Steelers. Like we saw like that, but this was a whole different situation. It felt like back then, where it was it was kind of a statement fight in a lot of ways. Like, is that how you guys took it? Like, do you remember being in that moment? You know, were you jacked? Were you you know were you mad? Like, what do you guys remember about being in that moment? Was it equal? Was it scary? Uh, for me, you know, I think I think it was harder for me. I was I didn't get involved in, and I didn't throw any blows. I, I was just trying to clear stuff out, get guys out. Man, hey, because I didn't play that game, like you said. Like I didn't, I wasn't in the physical battle in the trenches. You know, I was on the sidelines. You know, pouring my heart out and and cheering and like you know doing that stuff. But I wasn't in the game battling. I wasn't in the in the in the game. You know talking back and forth with someone, you know, I wasn't in that. So um, at the end of the day, you know, it's, I just remember it happening and trying to figure out what's going on. It's because again, like I just said, it happened so fast, but what's going on, you know, man, just pulling guys back, pulling guys back, pulling coaches, you know, it, it, everybody, everybody was involved. And um, yeah, I mean, it, it's funny to hear you say that the fight kind of put the Hawaii ball on the map, but, um, you know, it is what it is. It, it was a, yeah, maybe it was a statement to, to let people know like, Hey, you, you really aren't going to come in here and try to start a fight. You know, you start a fight, you, the results, it is yeah. what it is. You know what I mean? You fight, you fight. Yeah. So as we look back 17 years ago, and you guys have had such storied professional careers. You both played very long in the, in the professional ranks. I, I'm kind of curious on this one is, did that game or did that fight ever come up in your professional careers? Like oh, with yeah. a scout, with a coach? It, it did, man. Other players, man. I, I, had, I think I was a teammate with one of the players that was from Houston. I, I was a teammate for sure with one of the players from Cincinnati. So that brought back some memories. And uh, I want to say that there was a player either that was on that team or that was on, that was from the university of Houston, but at a later era, he was younger than me and that, you know, it still gets talked about. So it's definitely one of those things that, that goes down in history that, you know, We'll forever be talking about him, and we're talking about it now because Hawaii's playing Houston in the in the New Mexico Bowl. So you know, my only hopes is that. I mean, maybe that's going to be a form of motivation for them, but as far as us on our end, it's man, it's a it's a it's a new coaching staff. You know what I mean? It's so far removed, in my opinion, and I'm pretty I'm pretty sure the University of Houston coaching staff is different as well, right? Yes. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, the history's there. I'm pretty sure our guys are talking about it because that that game, 
they're talking about it. Everyone's talking about it, right? So I just hope that there's, uh, you know, you should never go into a football game, uh, uh, you know, with with a different motivation than than other than just going in to win the game and and doing it the right way. Um, mm-hmm. If 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 you're gonna look at a fight from 17 years ago and and use that as your motivation, <laughs> you, you you got something else coming because if you need that to get motivated, you ain't ready to play. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So. Uh, but it is going to be interesting to see what happens come this. Uh, it's it's on. Is it Christmas Day? It's on Christmas Eve day. Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens, man. Uh, maybe they should just fight before the game so they get out the way, and then and then play the game. <laughs> and then play the game. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll get back to that about this year just real quick. That's what we're going to close on. But Isaac, I want to ask the same question for you. In your professional career, did that game? that classic of a game and that fight ever come back up in your professional career? Yep. There were a lot of guys, a lot of my teammates with the, uh, with the uh, San Fran been asking about that game, especially with Jeff Ulbrich was there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And actually is, it, it was my first three years. This, this game against Houston keep coming up, keep coming up. But to me, I had pride to share it because we won the game and not to, you know. And, and we, we won the fight. And we won the fight. <laughs> okay. So, now, you both are, you know, big-time spokes guys for UH. You both are fans. You look at your houses here on the video part of our podcast. You both care so much about this university, about this program. Final thoughts going into this bowl game this year against Houston. What do you guys think? Chad, I'll start with you. Um, I mean, I just think that it – I just got to commend, you know, both teams. But I'm going to talk about our, our boys, right, the University of Hawaii and, and, and the COVID season. You know, I think it, this was such a unique season, you know, going from getting canceled to – happening to what's going on starting late only eight games it was such a hard season going through that type of off season and uncertainty and all those things Uh, so I just got to give the boys credit man I got to give this new coaching staff oh I'm almost done sorry (laughs) I got to give this coaching staff uh big props man big credit because they came into a situation where uh, it was new. Uh, they didn't have a relationship with with anybody, with the fans, with the community, and they didn't have a chance to because of COVID. They they couldn't really do a lot of the things that they had planned to do. So I'm just you know happy that uh, they 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 had a season, and they were able to go out and compete. And and look, they got an extra game. They got a bowl game uh, on Christmas Eve. So um, I'm definitely thankful for that. And I'm wishing him luck. Isaac, your thoughts and the final word, my man. Yeah, uh, same thing. You know, I always uh, share this to uh, family and, uh, you know, friends. I, I am so grateful. Grateful for, for this uh, uh, coaches and, you know, to to choose to come here to Coach Hawaii and then, boom, this COVID thing happened. But it's just – Every time that I, you know, go in, I always see each, you know, the voice of caring from those coaches to to the, you know, to the guys. But you know, just uh, just uh, you know, just uh, you know, cut that. But uh, I wish the boys the best. I I wish that you know. Uh, what what we did 17, 17 years ago was not a you know fluke because it was here at our home. Now they can go to outside of Hawaii and then you know prove it that we beat Houston here and now we can also beat Houston somewhere else. You know, so I just you know wish uh, the whole family you know. Hawaii Warriors family, you know, the best and 
gotta win this game. 